Hey, welcome to Board Game Casual Design Diaries, a series that focuses on content for aspiring board game designers and things I'm working on as an aspiring designer myself. In this episode, I wanted to share my trick for making awesome looking custom dice for your prototypes. The key is using this, the Brother P-Touch PDT 600 Label Maker. When making prototype dice, a lot of people get labels or stickers that you can run through a normal inkjet printer. But those are much more prone to the ink smudging or wearing out after being handled a lot. Why I like using a label maker is because the laminated labels won't smudge or fade. They stick really well and they look like complete dice. But of course, have the benefit of still being able to remove and replace a label if you need to make adjustments or rebalance the game. There are a lot of different makes and models of label makers out there. In fact, this is a slightly older model that I think has been replaced by a newer one. For the most flexibility though, you want to get a label maker that can connect to a computer. This one plugs in via USB. I think the new models use Bluetooth. And with the app on your computer, there's practically no limit to the designs you can print. So rather than being bound to a limited set of fonts or icons that you would have in a self-contained label maker, connecting to your computer allows you to use any vector image you want, including ones that you design yourself. Now the label maker is limited to printing in one color, but if you need more colors in your game, you can swap in different color tapes. All of the tapes I have print black on these different colors. But you can also buy tapes that print white, red, gold, etc. So you can look for the print color and tape color combination of your choice. Take it a step further by buying different color blank dice or cubes, and you can make all sorts of different color combinations of dice. As far as the blank dice go, I get all of mine on Amazon. I like this 16 millimeter size, which is your typical Monopoly size dice. I got this set of 15 blank white dice for about $9 and I got this set of 100 multicolor blank dice for $15. The label maker can print different sized labels depending on the tape size you use, AKA the height of the label. To ensure the label fits within the die faces, I went with 12 millimeter labels. I found this pack of six different color labels for 20 bucks. I've put the links to all of these things in the description of this video, but definitely shop around for the best prices. There are a lot of different companies that make labels as well as blank dice. This label maker has a built-in cutter that automatically cuts off the label when it's done printing, but it'll always allot a certain amount of buffer on either side of the printed area. I find this to be a little wasteful since the ends end up getting cut off to fit the tight margin of the die faces. So I like to put all six faces into a single print and then just cut between each one with scissors rather than printing one face at a time. You could do even longer print runs with the faces for multiple dice in a single line if you wanted to save even more tape. I'll do this if I know I'm printing a lot of the same dice. The results come out fantastic and professional looking. From a distance, you wouldn't even realize they're not custom printed. The glossy labels make them look like finished dice. As I mentioned, because of the label maker technology, which is usually a laser or thermal printing and lamination process, you don't have to worry about the ink smearing or wearing out from sweaty hands. I actually think these would be good enough to send as part of a prototype to a publisher, which might save you a little money compared to custom printing some especially if you're sending out multiple copies uh, of your game that you might not get back. For those that are curious, these dice were made for one of my first ever prototypes. I had an idea for a medieval multiplayer battle theme game where you build up your army and fight one another. The dice represent the different types of troops you can acquire that make your army. They have varying skills. Uh, for example, Soldiers are expensive to acquire, but loyal. They'll fight to the death, or at a minimum, return to you retreating in defeat. Mercenaries, on the other hand, are cheap, 
but there's a risk of them defecting to your opponent's army if they lose a battle. In practice, the main battle mechanic didn't work as cleanly as I would have liked, and I shelved this idea a long time ago to come back to later. And logistically, I know pitching a game that requires this many dice to a publisher would also be a really tough sell. But I gotta admit, seeing these dice again kind of make me want to get back to this design. If you're interested in hearing more about this particular shelf design, let me know in the comments. I could certainly go into detail about the gameplay and mechanisms in another video. Maybe you could even help with suggestions that will get this one up and running again. I hope you found this tip helpful if you're someone who does a lot of prototyping. Label makers aren't all that expensive and definitely worth the investment if you plan on prototyping a lot of custom dice. You should be able to get a label maker like this one and a pack of colored tapes for under a hundred bucks. I always get compliments on my dice when I bring my games to playtesting groups. And I don't have to worry too much about people with sweaty hands mad handling them too much. Thanks for watching Design Diaries. I'm excited about this series and there's a lot more to come. Until then, happy designing and happy playtesting. I'll see you next time here on Board Game Casual.